Looking out to the stars, we have yet to find another planet that can support life. Our little sphere of natural forces provides the perfect conditions for life to thrive in many forms and across a wide range of environments. Energy from our sun powers the natural world all around us. It gives us the light we need to be able to see and for plants to photosynthesize. It generates the heat to warm the planet and allow life to take its first steps from single-celled organisms to the complex creatures that roam the earth today. The key driving factor on our planet is the weather. It controls so much of the natural cycle of the planet that without it, life would no longer continue. Tidal forces created from the moon's gravitational pull repeatedly expose the beaches, leaving pools in the sand and rocks. These pools briefly warm, allowing life to exist here that might struggle in the colder, more turbulent ocean. Giant waves from storms and tsunamis from earthquakes churn up the sea along the coastline and mix it into the ocean's currents that circulate around the globe. The currents flow through the deepest seas and allow creatures to travel through and navigate the oceans, moving into warmer waters for giving birth to offspring and to colder ones to find food. The ocean currents start in the Arctic when fresh cold water from melting ice sinks below the warmer, saltier waters and in turn provides the initial motions in the sea. The currents are strong and will carry pretty much anything that enters them. This includes any rubbish that's been thrown into the sea, as you can see here with oil drums and plastic bottles. A lot of animals will try to adapt to the unnatural elements of the seabed and grow around it. Other animals will see it as food, which will ultimately kill them either from ingesting it or having it get stuck around their necks, tails or fins. A plastic bag can be easily mistaken for a jellyfish when in the water, as both gently float around. The weather systems on the Earth have a huge effect on the landscape and the animals that inhabit it. Wind is important to blow seeds around and grow new plants on fresh ground. While it can be gentle and refreshing, it can be ramped up into destructive tornadoes and hurricanes, clearing large areas of land. Changes in pressure around the globe cause the winds with high pressure moving into low pressure to try and balance it all out. The clouds will be different based on the temperature and the amount of moisture in the air. Cumulonimbus clouds are one of the largest formations in the sky and generate a large amount of electrical energy as the friction increases between the water molecules. This energy bursts out as lightning and often shoots down towards the ground, grabbing hold of the tallest item in the local area and discharging along the surface of the ground. This force of nature is key to life having a chance here in the first place at all. They provided the first gases that started to warm the planet and push magma up from, the, up from deep in the earth to start the formation of some islands. Volcanoes form where there is a crack in the Earth's crust, allowing pressure below to pu push hot molten magma upwards, along with ash and a mix of gases. Magma is molten rock inside the Earth, but when it reaches the surface, it is called lava. When it cools, it becomes solid rock and over time forms the more familiar volcano shape. Volcanoes help improve soil quality by providing lots of nutrients that boost plants that are grown there. The Arctic and Antarctic are the coldest places on the Earth and cap the top and bottom of the planet.
The Antarctic is home to a lot of the penguins in the world, most notably the emperor penguin. Thick ice covers around 98% of the landmass here and is the highest, driest, windiest and iciest location on the planet. Over 90% of the world's ice sits here and contributes 80% to the world's total of fresh water. With Antarctica classified as a cold and dry desert, access to water inland is scarce and struggles to support an abundance of life. Antarctica does, however, support thousands of species which live on the islands and along the long stretches of coastline. Rainforests and forests around the world play a large part in recycling the atmosphere to keep it safe for a lot of animals to breathe. They suck up lots of carbon dioxide which they use to grow and pump out oxygen. This is the opposite of what we do, where we breathe in oxygen, amongst other gases, and exhale carbon dioxide. Rainforests in particular cover roughly 6% of the Earth's surface. The Amazon rainforest is so big that if it were its own country, it would be the ninth largest in the world. Rainforests are disappearing at an alarming rate, with around two football fields worth of forests being cut down every minute. Savannah is a vegetation type that grows under hot, seasonally dry climate conditions and consists of an open tree canopy with long grasses below. Temperatures here are warm or hot all year round and have very little rainfall throughout the year. And what rain there is, is usually condensed into a couple of months. Around a third of dead organic matter here is decomposed through termites feeding which stores a lot of the nutrients in termite mounds locked away from plant roots and lowering the overall soil quality. A lot of grazing animals inhabit this landscape, forming large herds. These large herds are a perfect opportunity for predators to get a bite to eat, such as a hunting cheetah that can run at incredible speeds to dash in and grab an animal. The Arctic is the northernmost spot on the Earth and is covered in snow and ice. Due to the Earth's tilt, you get at least one full day of sun and one full day of night. A large variety of animals call this place home such as polar bears, arctic foxes, walruses, seals and humans. The word arctic comes from the Greek word for bear, arctos, but not because polar bears live there. It's because you can see the constellations of Ursa Minor, Little Bear and Ursa Major, Great Bear. When the Voyager 1 spacecraft was travelling out of the solar system, passing beyond Neptune, it turned back and photographed all of the planets and saw the Earth as a pale blue dot due to our high percentage of water and oxygen. It saw the Earth as a fragile, tiny object floating through the cosmos. This image emphasised how important the Earth is to life survival. The delicate balance of forces between the earth, environments and animals need to be maintained, something that is changing with recent developments in human history.